uh, we take that road a lot. And believe me, everyone's traveling on that road. And I'm talking about 6th Avenue. And it Avenue served you Avenue well. Americas. It served you Absolutely. well, Brian. And well, look who uh, came down that road today. It is Tom Homan, the acting director of Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, also known as ICE. Got a big announcement. Just came out. You're retiring. Yeah, I, uh, the secretary made an announcement yesterday. I made the announcement last night, the war ceremony. Uh, I'm going to take an opportunity after 35 years in law enforcement and spend some more time with my family. They deserve it. You had to be convinced to even go another year, right? You had planned on going out a year earlier, I heard. Actually, I, I did. I retired January 27th, and at the end of my re retirement ceremony, I was in the hallway with my wife shaking hands with people leaving the ceremony, and I got a call from John Kelly, uh, secretary then, American hero in his own right, saying... Uh, the president would like you to stay and run the agency. <laughs> you can't Wait a minute, say no I'm to that, leaving. Can you? Yeah. Exactly <laughs> what I said. It happened at your retirement ceremony? It was after my retirement ceremony. He called, and matter of fact, the first words out of his mouth were, I know this is bad timing, <laughs> but the president would like you to stay and run the agency. And I, in all due respect, said, hey, I, I need to talk to my family about this. But he said, okay, I'll call you up Monday morning. And here's what the thought he left me with. He said, before you hang up, he was, you need, I want you to think about this. The president of the United States is asking you, a career law enforcement civil servant, to serve your country a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Have a great weekend. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so, the guilt so, trip. So look, I, you know, I already had something set up in the private sector with, with a lot more money I make now, but if I'm nothing, I'm a patriot. You know, sure. The president of the United States asked me to serve. He's a great president. Uh, he's doing the right thing for this country, so I want to come back and help him. Tom, let me ask you about this. There have been rumors that uh, maybe he, you, weren't getting along with the Secretary of, of uh, Department of Homeland Security, Kristen Nielsen. I heard that. that that's not true. Kristen Nielsen is, you know, she, she, she's a patriot in her own right. You know, she, she's serving her nation, and she's been very supportive of me and the men with ICE. During the whole budget negotiation, the omnibus bill, I had daily conversations. She was fighting for resources, fighting for money. So, no, I'm, I'm leaving for the right reasons, to spend more time with my wife and kids who've, who've sacrificed as much as I have in the last 34 years. Where are you from? Years. Where do they live? I live in the D.C. area, but I'm originally Famous. from upstate New York. I'm a native New Yorker, despite what Governor Cuomo thinks. I love, <laughs> I love the state of New York. Right. Uh, I heard about that. You know, he, he said he's, he doesn't have his papers together, so I we'll hope he can follow up on that as a civilian. Uh, let's talk about the caravan we've been tracking for the last two and a half weeks. It started with 1,500 people. Now they're down to about 200, 250, and they're asking, waving the Honduran flag in many cases, uh, sitting on top of the fence in other cases, knocking on the door uh, in other cases asking to be let in as refugees what's your answer to that I think it's an, it's an attack on the sovereignty of this nation look do I think some of these people have a, a, a credible fear case that do, do some of these folks are, are they escaping fear and persecution yes some are but I also know that many aren't many are taking advantage of a system with with loopholes in it uh, and it's just it's just not my thought after 34 years if you look at how many get a, a, a positive, credible fear finding during the initial interview, which they're coached what to say. Mm -hmm. But it, when they show up in immigration court, if they show up in immigration court, the judges find very few. I think the last numbers I looked at between 30 and 40 percent actually would have a, a credible fear finding, which means mm -hmm. every, all the rest are, you know. Made up. Yeah. They, you know, they, they, they see the attraction of America. I get it. But we just can't open up our doors to everyone. Our system's not supposed to, you know, we have to have a country. No, you know, I can't blame anybody for wanting to be a part of the greatest country on earth. But there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. You can't want to be a part of the greatest country on earth and not respect its laws. Sure. You can't have it both ways. Not under this president, which I think is the right thing. Well, and Mexico offered them asylum, from what I understand, correct? Weren't they coming up from Central America? Yeah. They enter into Mexico. Mexico says, you can stay here. We'll offer you asylum. So why are they continuing to come to our country? They can't really plead the case that they're in danger anymore because Mexico's allowed them to stay there. Excellent point that a lot of people don't want to talk about, right? We don't have tens of thousands of citizens of Mexico asking for asylum in the United States. These people have been in Mexico for several weeks now, right? So apparently it isn't that bad. They didn't try to come to the United States right away, try to enter illegally because they're in fear for their lives. Again, I want to be clear. I think some may have a good case, but sure. many don't. But that's if they're really escaping Guatemala, Honduras, and they're in Mexico, is it about escaping fear and persecution, or is it about mm -hmm. getting to the United States? Right. And good let me point. ask you, are they more important than Syrians, Ye Yemenis, uh, from Danes, or, uh, or uh, uh, Czech Republic? I mean, there's other people in line doing it the right way. Exactly. And, and when you have, you know, for that population of folks, or that population that's taking advantage of the system and committing some sort of fraud, there are people in this world that really need 
to come to this country. Mm -hmm. They really are escaping fear and persecution. And when you clog this system up, you're delaying people that really need our help. Right. But you, uh, the Department of Homeland Security and ICE, you're changing the rules. Under this president, you're changing the rules. The, uh, the migrants have been lawyered up. But now that they're here, you know, on our southern border, uh, the, those who are being allowed to apply for asylum, they got to stay there. You're not going to let them back into the, uh, the country in general. They're going to have to wait until they get their hearing. And then the 11 who jumped the fence because they didn't want to wait, they've been arrested. And it's not catching and release this time. They're changing some things. But, you know, one thing we got to remember is this president hasn't changed an awful lot. This president is simply saying you will enforce the laws on the books, which we haven't been allowed to do in, in a long, long time. You know, I, I often say that, you know, people ask me all the time about this president and, and the way he's attacking immigration enforcement. And I've said, it. look, I've worked for six presidents. I, I was hired under uh, Ronald Reagan. I've worked for six different presidents. None of them has done more than Donald Trump has for border security right. and law enforcement. This, this president done more for us than any president. And I've worked for six of them. I respect all of them. But no one's done more for border security and public safety and law enforcement right. than this president. I want you to hear the counter side. I told you these, a lot of these caravan, caravanners have, uh, most of from Honduras, have lawyers. Here's the lawyer complaining about the system, and they're not budging. Listen. The message for customs and border protection. Stop rejecting asylum seekers who try to present themselves at the port of entry. You know what you're doing. You know you turn people away. You complain that they are breaking the law by entering illegally. You are breaking the law, and you are forcing them to break the law. That's why we have caravans. Do you agree with that logic? No. Look, we're a sovereign country. We have a right to decide who comes in this country and how they come in. We are following the laws. And we're not, we're not going to do it on their time frame. We're going to do it in the government's time frame. Make sure we know who these people are. Make sure they're vetted properly. Make sure they have a claim to come to the United States, uh, you know, a credible fear claim. So, no, we're, we're playing by the rules. We're, that's what you keep hearing, the rule of law, the rule of law, the rule of law. And I hear this all the time. We follow the rule of law. And that's why I, I had an issue with Governor Cuomo last week when he wants to call out the ICE officers, calling them, saying they're breaking the law, they're violating the Constitution. No, they're enforcing the law. If you don't like what we do, then tell Congress to change the laws. But the 20,000 men and women of ICE, who I love dearly, every one of them come to work every day. They strap a gun to their hip, leave the safety and security of their homes to defend this nation. So how, how dare you know, politicians like this governor and other politicians call them cowards, you know, call them Nazis and racists? They're enforcing laws enacted by Congress. They're doing their sworn oath. They're American heroes. And they need to be, they need to be identified as such. Mm -hmm. Tom, you're, you're from, you said, originally New York. The governor here and... Um, Bill de Blasio, our, um, our uh, mayor, they want to make this sanctuary city. They want to protect these illegals. They care more about the illegals, some people say, than they do the legals. Look what's happening in California. You see cities are breaking away now. They're siding with you and not, and not their governor. You see on the front lines what these people are really like, what the story is. You have a heart for them, I understand. But tell the American public what you see and what's your message to the Democrats that want to support these illegals versus the legals? There's a right way and wrong way um, to come to this country. We need to do it the legal way. For people who are standing in line for five, six years, it's not fair to them to, to, to try to follow the laws of this country while people break the law. Uh, sanctuary cities, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got a few minutes. Cause I, I want to be clear to your viewers on the dangers of sanctuary cities. There's those politicians say sanctuary cities protect the immigrant community. There's four reasons why that is completely opposite of reality. Number one, a sanctuary city, when you knowingly release a, a public safety threat back into the public, that is a danger to the community. When you're an illegal alien in a county jail and you get released, you're going to go back to the immigrant community where you live because that's where you victimize. So sanctuary cities put the immigrant community at greater risk of crime because that's where the criminal alien is going to go back to. Mm -hmm. Second of all, they say that sanctuary cities protect immigrant communities again. No, what Sanctuary Cities does is if I can't arrest a bad guy in a county jail, which means I'm in the county jail arresting the bad guy, they release him. My job is to go locate him and arrest him, which means I'm going into that community or that place of business where I'm, where I'm going to find him and probably others, others that weren't even on my radar. So what have Sanctuary City policies done? They put the immigrant community at greater risk of crime. They put them at greater risk of ICE arrests. They put my officers at great risk. Rather than taking custody of a public safety threat inside of a county jail where we know we don't have weapons, now we're knocking on the door. And it's a matter of time. And, and it, you know, every night I, before I go to bed, I think I, I pray for the men and women of ICE that they get home safe because one of these days we're we'll gonna knock on the wrong door.
Uh. Of somebody we shouldn't have knock on the door because we should have gotten to the county jail. So it's a public safety threat, it's an officer safety threat, it puts the immigrant community at greater risk of, of, of immigration arrest. It bankrolls criminal organizations. Sanctuary cities are enticement. Alien smuggling organizations in Central America and all over the world are, are using that as an enticement. Look, we'll get you to Los Angeles for this much money. Right. You can even get arrested and they're not going to work with ICE. And lastly, I'll throw this out because there's no answer to this from, from politicians that want to push sanctuary city policies. Go to the immigrant community. Ask them, would you, rather, would you rather have ICE agents in your neighborhood or in the county jail? What do you think they're going to say? Immigrant communities, if you're here illegally, you violate law. Right. That's not good. However, despite them violating law and being here illegally, most of them are family people. They sure. want to live a safe, secure life, and they're pretty much law-abiding right. other than the illegal entry. They don't want child right. predators in their neighborhoods either. You know, you, you made it so simple to understand. That's one of the reasons people love you, because you're a straight talker and you got common sense. And that's one of the reasons why you just got the award for the National Law Enforcement Leader of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you. That was, that's the biggest honor of my life, because, you know, I got the President's Rank Award. Great honor. But to be recognized by uh, federal law enforcement officers from all over the country, uh, getting recognized by one of your own, who's actually carried the badge and gun. Yeah. Um, last night was the greatest honor in my career. But you're not done yet. Will you indicate what you're doing next? I can't, but I want to make, I want to make one thing clear. I'm staying in the fight. Uh, like I said, I tried to retire a year, year and a half ago. I come back. Uh, I want to retire earlier this year, but I wanted to finish the California lawsuit. I just finished my deposition on that, uh, a long, uncomfortable deposition. But we're going to win this. And, you know, again, last week, I wanted to announce something last week, then your governor upset me, so I'm, I want to stay and I'm going to fight that. I'm not leaving tomorrow, <laughs> right. but I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to abandon the men and women of ICE. They're American heroes. Right. I'm going to fight for them. And, if, and when I go to the outside, I'm going to keep fighting for them. Yep. When you're a government employee, you have certain rules, what you can say, what you can do as a civilian. Do whatever you want. I, I can say Old more about my news. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much. Appreciate Thank it. Hopefully you, you can uh, still be a thanks resource for us. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you for your service. Thank yeah. you, sir. Right. Real pleasure. All right. Meanwhile, still more show to go. A key Senate race is in a dead heat. Democrat Claire McCaskill.